The theme that I've chosen for this Sunday is what is dangerous, leprosy or sin? It's a question uh, before we even we'll go to the gospel reading. Just think about it, pause for a minute, ask this question, what is dangerous, leprosy or sin? Until quite recently, people throughout the world feared leprosy, a disease that attacks the extremities, feet, fingers, nose, causing them to lose sensation and to begin to rot. Leprosy consumes the body, leading to a painful death. To protect themselves, different societies isolated the leper. A person who touches a leper himself becomes unclean. Leprosy is actually not that contagious. You can catch it only if you come into close and repeated contact with nose and mouth droplets from someone with untreated leprosy. Children are more likely to get leprosy than adults. Nearly 60% of the cases in the world are in India. And in that culture, if you have leprosy, your village ostracizes you and your entire family. In 2022, out of 49 countries and territories, 22 reported a total of 21,398 new cases of leprosy. Of the new cases reported that year, 92% occurred in Brazil. About 150 people are diagnosed with leprosy each year in the United States. World Leprosy Day is celebrated on the last Sunday of January. What causes leprosy? Leprosy is caused by a slow-growing type of bacteria called Mycobacterium leprae. Leprosy is also known as Hansen's disease after the scientists who discovered uh, in 1873. What are the symptoms of leprosy? Leprosy primarily affects the skin and the nerves outside the brain and the spinal cord called the peripheral nerves. It may also strike the eyes and then tissue lining the inside of the nose. The main symptom of leprosy is disfiguring skin sores, lumps or bumps that do not go away after several weeks or months. The skin sores are pale colored. How is leprosy treated? Leprosy can be cured. In the last two decades, 16 million people with leprosy have been cured. The World Health Organization provides free treatment for all people with leprosy. Leprosy in the Old Testament It was the duty of the priests of the Sinai Covenant to preside over the prescribed communal and individual voluntary sacrifices in the liturgical worship services. They also had other duties to perform for the community as recorded in this section of the book of Leviticus, including public health duties. They were to examine and decide on health issues that could harm the entire community. The procedure for suspicious skin conditions consisted of examination and isolation for seven days before the priest reached a final determination. It was a tragedy for a covenant member to be diagnosed with a contagious skin disease like leprosy. They were expelled from the community and forced to live alone or in groups with others in the same physically unclean state. Luke chapter 17 verse 12. They were required to show physical signs of their forced separation by shaving their heads, wearing torn garments and covering their beards, all signs of death, penance and mourning. In some cases, they were asked to have long hair, not to shave their head but without combing, but you have to have a lengthy hair. They could not offer sacrifices in the desert sanctuary, nor in Jesus' time could they join the congregations of the local synagogues or worship in Jerusalem temple because their unclean condition made them unfit for communal worship. Several cases of leprosy are mentioned in the Old Testament. For example, Miriam, a Cushite woman incident, stricken with a scaly infection, white as a snow. Now, Miriam is a sister of Moses. Naaman, army commander of the king of Aram, 2 Kings chapter 5, verse 10. Gehazi, 2 Kings chapter 5, verse 25. King Azariah, Uzziah, 2 Kings chapter 15 verse 5, and four lepers at the siege of Samaria, 2 Kings chapter 7 verse 3. In the New Testament, Jesus healed lepers. 
a lot of lepers. He gave the same power to his disciples to heal the lepers. And he was welcomed to a dinner given in his honor on the Wednesday before his crucifixion by a healed leper named Simon who lived in Bethany. When he was in Bethany reclining at table in the house of Simon the leper, a woman came with an alabaster jar of perfumed oil, costly genuine spike knot. She broke the alabaster jar and poured it on his head. Why did Jesus touch the leper to heal, especially in this gospel reading? Many scholars usually point out to the compassionate nature of Jesus. But when I look at the phrase from scriptural point, it reveals the divinity of Jesus. He stretches out his hand, verse 41, just as God by his outstretched hand performed mighty acts to save the Israelites in the Exodus experience and in other mighty deeds in the history of the covenant people. Take, for example, Exodus chapter 13, verse 9. It will be like a sign on your hand and a reminder on your forehead so that the teaching of the Lord will be on your lips. With a strong hand, the Lord brought you out of Egypt. And mentioned in the prayer in Acts of the Apostles, chapter 4, verse 30. It's part of the prayer of the community. As you stretch forth your hand to heal and signs and wonders are done through the name of your holy servant, Jesus, as they prayed, the place where they were gathered shook and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and continued to speak the word of God with boldness. So this ritual sign is accompanied by his divine word, I will do it, be made clean. What is dangerous leprosy or sin? Now, I would like to reflect with you on the responsorial psalm. Believe it or not, it is the responsorial psalm that has a key to interpret the readings today. This explanation comes from Dr. Brown Petrie. Psalm 32 is about the joy of forgiveness. It is a joy of being forgiven of one's sins. The psalm begins, Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Now, you might ask, what does that have to do with leprosy? What does that have to do with the Old Testament and the Gospel reading? If you look at ancient Christian writings, it was very common for them to say that leprosy in the Old Testament was a kind of visible outward sign that symbolized the spiritual reality of sin. In other words, leprosy can kill you. Leprosy makes you sick physically. Well, what does sin do spiritually? It makes you sick and spiritually it is deadly. It can kill you. Leprosy separates you from other people, separates you from the worship of God. It separates you from the community. Well, what does sin do? Sin divides us. It separates us from God and it separates us from our neighbor. That on one hand, it is a physical disease and the laws are given to regulate it in the Old Testament. On the other hand, it points forward to the spiritual leprosy of the soul which is sin and the joy of being healed of the sickness of sin and we confess our sins to God and when we are forgiven. In the Old Testament, priests had two duties. They would both pronounce a person clean of physical diseases like leprosy, but they would also pronounce a person to be forgiven of their sins through the sacrifice of atonement that were often in the temple. So the church here is inviting us to see the deeper spiritual significance of the man's leprosy in the gospel episode as a kind of sign of the fact that Jesus has the power not just over sickness of the body but over the sickness of the soul as well. The fact that it was necessary to go to a priest in the Old Testament to be declared clean of leprosy was a kind of typology pointing forward to the New Testament in which if we have a mortal sin, a deadly sin, instead of a deadly disease, we cannot just declare ourselves clean. We need to go to an appointed priest in the sacrament of confession and receive that spiritual cleansing, that spiritual healing, and be declared forgiven by a priest of Jesus Christ. You may feel reluctant to let Jesus touch you, but please just come this Ash Wednesday, February 14th. Receive that cross of ashes on your forehead. Say to Jesus, if you want to, you can make me clean. Allow Jesus to touch you in the sacrament of reconciliation. I do will it, he says. Be 
made clean. Amen.